My name is Sarah and happy 2018! Woo! It's time for a new year once again. And that is Caesar. And to start off this year, we have the book review of An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Yeah. So, non spoilers. For those of you who are fans of, you know, Akatar, this is kind of up your alley. Mm hmm. Because we have a girl named Isabel, and she has a craft, which is, in a way, a, like a trade, a special skill that she, you know, honed and worked hard on, and she can make portraits, which is like, you know. Huh? But then we have what's called the fair ones. Fairies that can't do craft at all, so they crave it from humans. And yeah, they especially like Isabel's craft because she does wonderful portraits. Well, she makes a tiny little mistake when she does a portrait for a prince. That's right, for a prince named Rook. She accidentally puts in human emotions and that causes like a huge uproar. And thus the journey begins. I give it a four out of five stars. Um, it kind of felt like a little instant lovey-dovey in a bit. And then of course she was like doubting the feelings. And at the end it seemed a little bit rushed. And it's like, is there going to be a sequel or an expansion of this world? Because um, Margaret. You have like a wonderful world and I would love to see more of the courts and stuff because we barely got to visit some and we didn't even vi visit one of them. And then we have what's called the world beyond. I'm like, that sounds like our world. Is it modern day on that side and medieval on where the phase are or you know, like the fair folk? I have questions that need answering. So, uh, four out of five stars. For those of you who like Ekatar, Again, this is kind of up your alley. It's a sh like a nice little short read. And yeah, that's as far as I can go with non-spoilers because it... Spoilers. So yeah. And yeah. Bye, non-spoilers! Wah! Spoilers. So like I said, Isabel has a craft, which is painting portraits. And it's like, it sounds like anything human made from blacksmithing to apparently cooking is a craft. So, be careful if there are fair folk here today because they can call any of us with the ability of a craft. And yeah. So, Isabel, she does portraits for a bunch of fair folk. And her one of her patrons named Gadfly... Yes, his name is Gaslight. Like, says, oh, by the way, the Autumn Prince is showing up tomorrow for his portrait. <laughs> to the Say what? Can you repeat that? A prince is dropping by tomorrow because to get his portrait done. And apparently, Rook, the prince, has been in um, Whimsy, their little town, in like centuries. I think like three centuries. And people are like, he used to visit all the time. <laughs> so people deal with enchantments in this world. It's like, you know, you have a craft and a fair folk pays you by an enchantment. But you gotta be very careful. So you already know I'm not gonna live in this world because if you were able to figure out that riddle Amarantha gave Feyre in Akatar before she even did the trials, you're okay in this world because you gotta be very crafty and very wordy to make sure the enchantment doesn't work against you. As for me, nope. I'm, I I probably wouldn't make it. So, yeah. F Isabel lives with her aunt, Emma, and her sister, her adopted sisters, March and May. And they were enchanted. You're like, hmm, what do you mean, Sarah? What did they get enchanted with? Well, apparently they were goats. <laughs> and a fair folk, like, probably drunk, placed an enchantment on them, and now they're girls. I'm like, yo! So, you know, the fair folks don't like seeing them because it's like an embarrassment. But I'm like, that's amazing. Like, she has two little sisters now. We have Marge that really doesn't speak, but she always eats about anything to get her hands on. And then we have May, who is just a sweet, adorable little girl that likes to insert herself in almost anything. So it's like, I want to know more about the other. They're so cute. So, 
when we see Rook, he saves Emma from a fairy beast. And apparently, you know, we have the wild hunt, and he does all the hunting and stuff. And she doesn't know it's Rook until, like, he says, I'll see you tomorrow, Isabel. And she's like, oh, crap. And so <laughs> she does do his portrait the next day, and um, she realizes that he likes, he has, like, a raven pendant that was obviously crafted. And he likes shape-shifting into ravens. And when they finish the portrait, his um, enchantment is like warnings by ravens. One means this, six means this, a dozen means this. So apparently he likes ravens a lot. Which is like, why? I would like to know why he likes ravens and stuff. So it's like, you know, he gets this portrait. Emma gets all, you know, Isabel gets all like, you know, lovey-dovey. It's like, wait, well, I can't be in love with a fair folk because there's the good law. Apparently there's a law said by like you know the king of all fairies the alder king um that says like you know a fair folk and a human cannot be in love with each other or is automatic death unless you know uh the human drinks from the green well which apparently turns people who have spect spectacular craft into a fair folk I'm like because we do meet a woman named aster who was craft, which was being a writer, and she doesn't exactly remember all that stuff. Like, you know. I don't think I would want to be a fair folk. Like, I would not want to harness a craft. I don't want to be on their radar and be like, you know, do you want your enchantments? If you're this good, you want to go drink from the green one? I'm like, leave me alone. No, thank you. So, Rook returns furious. And I'm with this, but like, why are did your portrait and he's like you know uh how dare you put human emotions on me blah 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 it's like if you give it to me i will fix it i promise even though it's the best of my work it's like ha the damage is done it was unveiled publicly my whole whole court saw this and i will quote isabel right here shit yep and apparently whenever a fair folk shows a sign of weakness Ah, uh, the others just on the they just attack. They see a sign of weakness as like, uh, I'm gonna kill you right then and there. And with him being a prince, whew, a lot of people are looking for weaknesses. So thank you, Isabel. You made Rook look weak in front of his entire court without knowing, and now he wants you to go pay for it. And so he commands her to follow her, but apparently she has not given him her true name. So in this world. You go by, a, 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 not your birth name, but like say a given name. Because that's what happens if a fair one, fair folk gets your full name, your real name, they scroll you, meaning they can have absolute control over you. So I'm like, I can pick any name I want, right? Huh? Huh? Mm. Either way. Uh... <laughs> So, and also apparently, whenever you curtsy or bow to a fair folk, they have to return the gesture. So, when Rook is commanding Isabel, just making her legs move and stuff, to so they can walk to the autumn court, apparently they don't sift or anything. She starts curtsying. He starts bowing back. Stop it. Curtsy, bow, curtsy, bow, curtsy, stop it! And so he enchants her entire body just to walk. So, this is where it becomes like a journey quest kind of way because they get to the autumn court like the outside of the autumn court and they sleep there and then they decide to take a shortcut through the summer court and apparently there's a blight going on that even Rook didn't know about oh and by the way they're being chased by the woman that answered the wild hunt named Hemlock who's from the winter court we see nothing of the winter court and like hello and she no longer answers the horn but to the alder king and then they figure the best way, because they get attacked by like an old one of some sort, and Rook's injured, and they figure after the travels and stuff, they figure, okay, it was an accident, you didn't mean to do this. And so they go to Spring Court. That's about to have a masquerade ball. So, ah, uh, fair folk, they like to glamour themselves pretty, right? But... When you're out of magic, your glamour wears off. And so Isabel sees 
Rook's true form. It's all like, you know, sharp teeth, the little hollow in the cheeks, all gangly and stuff, you know, and his clothes are no longer pretty. I'm like, I'm, all, I, 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 I'm kind of with the Winter Court because they don't believe in glamours, while the other courts love to make themselves look beautiful and don't eat anything from the glamour, any of the food because it's all uh, and they use the glamour to make it look all uh, in their clothes as well. And um, so M. Isabel is no longer like afraid of Rook in his, uh, in his true form. She even like tends to him while he's he gets injured, and he's like, "You let me stay like this? How like you know I'm not." glorious enough and she's like I'm pretty sure the creature that was attacking you wasn't very you know occupied with what you looked and so there was a time they had like a cute little you know commentary against each other battering around you know being around the bush being cute and so my favorite part about that was like after he gets after he wakes up from his wounds he just is a bit like okay get up we got get going he's like oh, I don't want to go I'm so weak he reminds me of the uh, I think it was Kuro from Sir Vamp when he was in this you know sloth when he was being um in his little cat form he's just being so lazy and so that that's what reminded me instantly of he's like I don't want to get up and this was like hurry up get up we gotta go and he just pulls her down like let's just lay here so he admits to her that he's in love with her and she's like knows that she's in love with him and they're breaking the good law. So no one finds out. So, you know, they go to the spring court with this game, the idea in their mind. And, of course, you find out Gadfly is like, oh, don't forget to mention I'm a prince, too. You know, I'm beginning to suspect that him recommending to Isabel wasn't, like, you know, out of the blue or anything. So, we meet his sister, Lark. Cute little thing, you know, uh, wants, you know, to play and everything. This is the most that I see Rook in this raven form. Like, I could have gone, like, a whole adventure with Rook, say, trapped in this raven form. And I'd be like, oh, Because, um, when Lark goes to change Isabel after people saying, you know, let's give her the stuff that's still new. Not with all the moth-eaten and stuff that we need our glamours to make look beautiful. Uh, they go to the bird hall where Lark keeps all of her, you know, clothing and stuff. And while she's trying to find outfits for, um, Isabelle... Uh, we see a raven trying to get inside, you know, and, you know, um, Isabel opens it up and the raven just, like, falls on the floor and just, like, you know, fluffs his feathers and everything. And he turns back into, you know, a uh, rook wearing clothes that Gadfly gave him. And he's like, I don't like this at all. Give me my old clothes back. And they're there to prove that, you know, Emma, no, Isabel has a, a spectacular gift. Which you could put, you know, emotions into fair folk, right? So they, Lark and Rook go help her collect items to make, to make portraits. And most of the time, Rook is like a little raven on her shoulder going like, Top, you look down upon me. I look down upon you. And stuff. And, you know, she, she does a whole day of portrait making. Putting emotions into fair folk expressions. And, like, of course she's going to need some rest, people. Uh, hello. And she goes to... Catfly's room, and uh, she's like looking at Lark. Surely he won't want me in this room. Oh, don't worry, he only comes in here like once a month. And there's like portraits of Gadfly everywhere. I'm like, they're following me. And of course, Rick shows up a little drunk, and like he gets in bed with her. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. And she hears someone coming. She's like, Quick, turn back into Raven, or and he turns back into Raven, like, oh, hello. And she stuffs him under the pillow blankets and holds him tight. And I pretend she's asleep and Lark just peeks in and everything. Okay, she's asleep. And then Rook starts moving around and this is like, what's a pretty bird? He stops. What's a lovely bird? You're the most loveliest bird of all. And he just settles down in his little bird form. I'm like, I could have done a whole book. If you're going to do a sequel to this, Margaret, um, I could do a whole book where Rook is just trapped in this bird form and everything so yeah you know that rule about not eating when offered something by a fair folk well apparently this works in this world um because lark who's being all friendly with isabel offers her a berry when they're alone and you you, you should know not to 
take things, take food that are offered to you by fairy folk. Because, um, Isabel turns into a rabbit. And she remembers how Lark wanted Rook to turn into a rabbit so she can chase for like a little game. Aw, oh, hell no! Isabel got turned into a rabbit and Lark's chasing her around. And the, Isabel's like in the back of her bunny mind thinking, uh, I'm not strong like a fair folk, so if Lark does catch me, is she really gonna break me? I'm like, and I'm also thinking this. When push comes to shove, rabbits can be mean. I mean, I've seen them fight. I'm like, I don't want to get near a rabbit when they fight. So it's like, knowing me, I would have forgotten about the whole eating thing, right? So, uh, I would be, I would, if Luck was here, she'd be all like, Would you like to have some of these? Sure, like, thank you. Hee 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 hee. Wait a second. Hey, let's play a game! Aw, oh, damn it. You run, and I chase you, and if I catch you, I win! Wait, I'm a cat. I got claws! Bring it on, bitch! Ah! Thus ending my acting career. Yeah, if I got turned into a little kitty cat like that, uh, again, bring it on, bitch! I'm using my claws. So, uh, Rook does save Isabelle. And he touched her back, thank goodness. So they're thinking that, you know, they're, well, masquerade isn't going so well. And apparently not, because not only does Lark mention that, you know, Gadfly sees things in advance, apparently he has an ability where he can see things. And on the thing of the masquerade, um, Aster says he knows that y'all broke the good law and you need Get you the green whale and drink the water so y'all can be safe. Well, Rook apparently gave Isabelle a chance to run because he's like, you know, we don't have to stay for the masquerade. We can go right now. No, let's stay. Keep up the charade. I would have been like, oh, let's get out of here. So. Apparently the Blight reached the Spring Court as well because uh, after, you know, they kiss in public and everything and Hemlock is apparently at the masquerade, the whole glimmer fades away. And we didn't get any explanation on the Blight or anything. So, why was it caused? What was happening and everything, you know. So they confront the Alder King who's been asleep for thousands of years. So, because, you know. So Rook, so they can be together and everything, and Rook challenges him, and then he had a plan. He had a plan, right? So apparently there were some fair folk that were helping Isabel while Rook was confronting the Alder King, and he gets all up, and the dust flies from his face. He's like, you, I just don't like you. I will kill you. And he's like, uh, <laughs> later, dude. And he turns back into a horse, and he gets Isabel, and he's like, that was your plan all along, to run away? It's like, so many ways we can avoid this total outcome where Emma gets home with the help, I mean, Isabel gets home with the help of Emma and Rook and the twins, and they make a portrait to, you know, stall the Alder King when he gets there with emotion in his face, and she stabs him with a dagger made out of um, iron sent by Gadfly. <laughs> Rook could have just taken her word for it that it was an accident. Or, you know, after she had saved his life and he realized that she didn't mean to do that, that he could have just brought her back home. Or we could have, like, yeah, rested in the spring court for a little bit before any of the court people knew and gone home. We could have left before the masquerade ball and gone home. Or, to make it work, apparently... Isabel gave him her real name and uh, she said make me feel make me not feel how I feel for you and we could have gone home and we don't know what um, Isabel's real name is because it was never revealed at the end but you know I'm just like thinking that you know since it's called enchantment of ravens and ravens happen to be everywhere that could be her real name 
her true name? I don't know. So now Isabel is the queen, and the land, which was always summer, is now autumn. And Gadfly is like, oh, it came out spectacular, like how I envisioned. And, um, and Isabel's like, you planned this from the beginning? Well, sweetie, I didn't know how it would turn out, but yes, I did. Long live the queen. Oh, and by the way, Rook, you are not king yet until you do a special something. Yes, I know. What was that something? Emma shows up. So who is going to fix my roof? Oh, dear. It is time for me to now leave. So, Rook, he lost a finger, but now it's going to live happily ever after with Emma, I mean Isabel, but you know, Isabel's like, I don't believe in happily ever after, let's see what will happen. All the fair folk are celebrating the new change of the season, and uh, she said like a certain human was collecting her books with a uh, young girl with sharp teeth and a man with like fair blonde hair. Um, Aster turned back human after Emma apparently destroyed after Isabel apparently destroyed the green well by throwing Rook's crafted raven pin into the green well and it blew up. So no more people turning into fair folk. Ha ha. So. Uh. Yeah. It's only like say about 307 pages I would say. Short little read. Kind of crammed in the whole world in here. And I wanted to know more. Like, we never saw the Winter Court. We didn't see the other courts in a way. We just caught glimpses of them. Um, we did find out that Rook was in love once. We never broke the good law because the woman that she didn't love him and she gave him the raven pen with the lock of her hair. And that was it. I would like to know more about how, how that happened and why that caused him to like leave when I understand why he left Whimsy for all those years. What was was that the first strike that he got against him? Or was did he have another strike against him before meeting Isabel? Because if he got a third strike, then of course he'd be dead. Um, after all of this that Gadfly did, I want to know more on how he planned all this. When he saw it, how he know how the outcome would be. And I think there might be another story with Gadfly and Esther. I don't know. Larknade's a friend, apparently. And is Isabel and Roka live in the, her cottage outside Whimsy? And what is the world beyond like? Um, modern day today or back then era? Because <coughs> we just get references to it, and I'm like, I want to know about the world beyond people. So, yes. M Margaret, is there going to be a second book in the series? Because you have me loaded with questions. We could get sequels. We could get prequels. We could get a spin-off in the world beyond coming into this world. You know, just saying. Um, four out of five stars, people. Just leaves you with all kinds of questions in your mind. So, yeah. Fans of Ekatar? Check it out. You might enjoy it. Cause certainly, as you can tell, I did. For you know, don't need anything from the fair folk people. That's all I gotta say. So yeah, an enchantment of ravens by Margaret Rogerson. So, my name is Sarah, and bye.